Yo, yeah, what's up, everybody? So, as promised, I'm here to make the Pokemon Unite tier list. So, I'm going to be covering this tier list in two different ways. First of all, I'm going to cover this with solo queue in mind only. So, it's just you, maybe a one other friend, solo dual queue. And then I'm going to make an another tier list I'm going to have at the end of the video. And that's going to be if you're in a five-man composition, because I do think the tier lists uh, wildly differ. Some characters that are solo queue gods are probably actually pretty damn useless when you have a five-man composition that's playing things properly. So, with that being said, this is the solo queue variation. Okay, great. Awesome. Let's start with this. So, the first character we're going to have here is our boy, uh, Venusaur, which kind of sucks up in this tier list. with a C tier, but yeah, he's pretty damn bad, no matter what, sadly. You kind of really need to build a cop around him, and he can do some really cute things, like Sludge Bomb enabling uh, Gengar's Hex, if you do have a Gengar on your team, and it does lower a lot of uh, lower people's defense, so that's really good. Or you could do the tanky variation of Venusaur, where you go like Giga Drain and Pedal Dance, and you take a bunch of tank items, and that's cute, but... It doesn't really ever do enough or does anything better than any other tankier character or even range attackers in the game. Uh, he does have a pretty strong early game and once you have Solar Beam, if which is probably the variation you should be playing with the Sludge Bomb Solar Beam combo, then he's pretty solid but still nothing to write home about. I'd rather just run something else. Uh, Gengar, in terms of solo queue, shouldn't surprise anybody, he is S tier. Uh, very, very strong speedster, in my opinion. The strongest speedster you could pick. His null potential is out of control, and he can absolutely demolish games by himself. He can straight up 1v9 monster. Uh, just If you're playing by yourself, and you're able to get jungle, just pick Gengar. Do yourself a favor. Super, super strong. And the reason for this is due to his own Sludge Bomb Hex combo, which pretty much after you land on Sludge Bomb, you're able to repeatedly use Hex over and over and over until the poison wears off, and you could just one-shot an entire team if you're able to get this off. So, super impactful character. Can't recommend him enough. Next, we have our boy, Mr. Mime. So, this one's very interesting. I personally think he may move up into A tier later on, when people play him more. But in terms of solo queue, I think he is a B tier. He is, as a support, he's actually a pretty dang good playmaker. And I think they kind of classified him wrong as a support, as the supporting tools aren't really there. You're going to be taking the wall and the pushback pretty much every single time. And you have a ton of damage that follows up from that. And your ultimate also leaves you unstoppable, doing a ton of AoE damage as well. Leaving Mr. Mime as a pretty solid character if you're trying to climb up. I don't think he's bad. And I think he fits into a lot of compositions. And people should probably try experimenting with a little more depth a very slept on character i think he's quite strong in lane a big lane bully but sadly there are better characters that kind of provide that wall or that lane bully play style if you're looking for that which we'll be getting to that pretty soon oh our boy snorlax <laughs> this shouldn't surprise anybody god tier just just move him up he's the best character in the game by far by far are. If a composition doesn't have Snorlax in it, you are making a mistake. This is solo queue, this is a competitive play, Snorlax does everything. Uh, and to put it how my friends put it, he has a Malphite ultimate on a 5 second cooldown. It is crazy, it's so fast, you pretty much can't react to it, he's incredibly tanky, his early game laning is amazing, you could take uh, the creeps, you could steal creeps and deny it like it's nothing. You. It's so good. He has rest in lane, which means he never has to take any of the fruits. So you can take trades for free, whittle down your opponents. He sets up for ganks super well for jungler. And then as you progress through the game, once you get heavy, heavy slam and barrier, it gets even more disgusting. You can take Yon if you're not uh, confident in your team actually being able to fall off the barrier, but and which is probably what I would take for solo queue. But for competitive settings, I personally take Barrier Heats, super, super strong, and pretty much stops anybody from doing anything. You just repeatedly can push an entire team. If two people get clumped into him, they're dead. They're as good as dead if you have anyone following up. Super, super amazing character. Put him in every team. Just put him in every single team. Crazy, crazy character. Absol. So, for solo queue, I think Absol is pretty decent. He has good snowball potential, and he's definitely one of the strongest speedsters in the game. But he is definitely no Gengar, that's for sure. He really relies on getting those crits. He's very focused on those auto attacks. And most of the time, he's just really taking down a target or two at most, while Gengar could potentially wipe an entire team if played correctly. So I do think this actually puts uh, Absol down to a B tier. I know. He's kind of just really good. He's okay, but he's not as good as some of the other speedsters we're going to be talking about later. I know it's by obsessive people, but he's really not as good as Gengar. Or you don't what we bringing up. Next we have our boy Garchomp or Gibble the adorable little fella. So 
Garchomp's whole thing, if you don't know, if you haven't played as him, played as him already, is that he is incredibly strong late game. Once he hits that level 10 power spike, he is a beast, the strongest melee hyper carry there is. His ultimate super impactful. He'll have his dig and his dragon claw dealing a ton of damage, and he's just really, really useful, right? But the issue is, of course, getting to that level 10 and keeping those passive stacks throughout a fight in a game where most compositions are running a ton of crowd control with Snorlax or Slowbro or even a Ninetales, it's really, really hard to get that damage off half the time, even when uh, you have scaled into the late game and you feel level 10. So you end up relying on your ultimate. This kind of just makes him really awkward, especially for having such a weak early game. His late game doesn't really make up for it. So in my opinion, I think that kind of puts him as a B tier. You really can't put him in a lane as your lane just kind of gets destroyed by anything that has any pressure. So you kind of have to force force him into the jungle. So this puts him into B tier, in my opinion. He's okay. He's not terrible. He definitely has his uses. And I'm sure you can build a composition around him. But he's just not very good. But you definitely can play him in solo queue and have very good success off that when people are going crazy. But he's just not good enough to move him up to A or S tier. Next, we have our boy Lucario. And man, this is a... Speaking of characters that bully, Lucario is the best bully in the game once he hits level 5 and he's able to get a charge up punch you could throw him in lane you could throw him in the jungle he is insane he can one shot pretty much any pokemon that is in his face and they can never walk up to you this also essentially gives him like an execute for dealing with the early pokemon around the map uh so whenever you're trying to contest your opponent's sides uh minions or or for when you're fighting a dreadmaw or a rodham if lucario's there he's pretty much going to be able to confirm it for free so yeah i definitely cannot recommend lucario more the only real issue lucario has is that scaling into the late game uh in comparison to some characters such as like cinderace greninja charizard just kind of doesn't really scale as well he definitely still keeps that pressure throughout the entire game where you're able to just go in kill one person get out get those resets and it still apply that pressure to the fights but it's not as good especially during that later zapdos fight but despite that he is still definitely an s tier character he as an all-arounder he could quite literally do everything by himself incredibly tanky due to his passive giving him free shield insane mobility uh insane engage slash disengage his ultimate is probably one of the worst in the game sadly but it's still just good enough to keep him where he is next we have our boy <sighs> sorry guys it's not very good. So we mentioned Snorlax earlier and Mr. Mime. These are characters that also have a wall built into their kit. But sadly, our crab friend here, he also has one of those walls. But it's one slower. Two, it, the damage really isn't there in his entire kit. Yeah, you could definitely do some cute things with X-Scissor and his ultimates. But it's just not enough to really warrant playing him, even in a solo queue environment. I think you're going to notice a trend here. Pretty much any other character that has a wall slash crowd control is doing his job, but better. He's... he's pretty just crustal is sadly pretty useless at the moment uh, you definitely can play him and play him to good success you if you have a composition that works and you need like an off tank yeah crustal definitely fits but usually if that's the case you're normally gonna want a snorlax or a slow bro or something else that could really fill that position just a lot easier so that's kind of my take on crustal right now i know you can tell me in the comments that you don't agree with this and hey if you don't agree you know, leave a comment down below. We can have a discussion. You can join the Discord and we can talk about it. But at the moment, Crustle, not looking too hot. Next, Greninja. I think Greninja is being a little slept on. Haiki, Haiki, I think he's being slept on so much. He's not an S-tier character, but he's definitely an A-tier character in my opinion. He's a very strong character and he can fit in most compositions just fine. Those melee auto attacks are insanely chunky. His mobility is incredible. And once he's able to hit level 7 where he actually turns into Greninja, he acts, has a ton of mobility, sustainability, and execute. Um, I've seen people take Smokescreen into Surf or Water Shuriken. I personally like the Surf variation more. I think that's the stronger variation to play Greninja in at the moment. At least that's what I've been seeing uh, some of the Master Tier players doing that I get them in my games. But it, it's just kind of hard to get to that point. So of course, if you want to have a Greninja on your team, you kind of need to put them in the jungle. So that does mean you lose some early game pressure. But once he's able to hit level 7, which is pretty much two rotations of camps, or if you're able to get your camps and the first rotation of bees in either lane, then you'll be good to go. So you just need a couple minutes to really scale, but you really cannot put him in a lane because he will get bullied, and having to share XP on him is really hurt. It's very similar to how we were talking about Garchomp, but at least with 
Greninja, he gets his power spike way, way, way earlier than Garchomp ever will because, you know, Garchomp relies on his ultimate. Greninja just really needs his upgraded basic abilities to do work. And once you get those upgraded basic abilities, you just go in, you start spamming them with the auto attacks, and once you're able to get that final auto attack in, you go in a smoke screen, hit them when you execute, get them with the surf, get the reset, and go off again. Also, his Unite ability is incredible. Uh, it's definitely very, very, well, not, not really incredible, but it's very solid. It's not the best one in the game, but it's okay. It does its job. It's not as bad as Lucario's, but it, it, it's fine. It's fine. It's mostly just those auto attacks and that passive that do a ton of work. And smoke screen, of course. So yeah, that's my opinion on Green Ninja. Definitely a slept on character. Talent Flame. Whew. For solo queue, sure. He might be able to work, but he's definitely the weakest beatster in the game. He is so awkward. With his he has iframes, and for those who don't know what that means, they're in vulnerability frames where essentially you have time when you can't hit him. That's really solid, but you can't really use it as an escape half the time because controlling it is super awkward. And his ultimate is okay it's cute it's like this dive that pushes people back but it's not very good he's definitely the weakest speedster in the game also his stats are awful you can't really get damage off so talifang really just feels like if we're already winning with talifang we would have been winning 20 times harder with any other speedster i'd rather have that Absol. i would have gengar i rather have uh i don't know i don't remember zerora i'd rather have literally any other speedster in this game over our boy Talonflame. Objectively awful. Just sadly, really, really weak character. I'm sure you can make a five-man composition around him, but if you're playing solo queue, I mean, of course, if you really like Talonflame, go play him. Not gonna stop you, of course. But you definitely have way better options, and I think you'll feel the power difference between a Talonflame and a Gengar in a single match. Charizard. This one's interesting, because I think, in my opinion, he's actually kind of moves up for me a little bit. I don't think he's C-tier awful, but for solo queue... He's kind of not looking too hot. I'm going to go with the hot take and put him B tier. Because of how strong his ultimate is. His ultimate just kind of does enough to kind of warrant putting him in the game. And if you do, if you don't make the mistake of taking Flamethrower and you take the Fire Punch instead and along with um, Seismic Tossed, you actually have a lot of mobility and you're pretty tanky for a melee character. And your ultimate's one of the strongest in the game. Absolutely crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy ultimate. Just dealing a ton of damage, able to go over terrain and execute a target. You pretty much get to assassinate the carry for free, and this is really huge, especially for the late game fight, where you're fighting over objective control such as Dreadnought or Zapdos. And as everyone knows, Zapdos is a, a pretty, pretty good objective to be fighting for. But Charizard does suffer from the same weakness as a lot of characters that we've been mentioning. His early game is very pathetic, and he doesn't even have range this time to make up for it, unlike Garchop kind of being stuck in melee rage. So you really need something to help you out, like an Elder Grass, or like a Lucario in lane to like really bully people off, or you kind of just put him in the jungle. Uh, one thing I, we actually did see is during the Invitational, or sorry, during the tournament that happened the other day, there was a Charizard team that took second place. Uh, that was the composition built around him. Now, of course, this was a competitive environment, and this isn't the part of the to talk about that, but it still kind of just shows that Charizard does have potential, and you definitely can take him to the solo queue setting and do a lot better than any of the characters you see in C tier. So that's kind of my take on our favorite flying dragon boy over here that's not a dragon. He's just... I don't know. What the hell is he? Why is he not a dragon? Zorora. This shouldn't surprise anyone. This really should not surprise anyone. Honestly, I don't even know if I would say S. I think I'll probably turn on to A. I think Gengar is really the only S tier kind of speedster in the game. I to me, Zoroa has kind of dropped down to like an A tier. Maybe if we're talking purely, purely solo queue, he's still S tier as he causes. He does so much damage and has so much disruption, and his United ability is very impactful. But if we're talking about in terms of speedsters, he's kind of just not as good as Gengar. And I know I keep repeating myself. If you've seen it once, you've seen it a million times. Gengar's hex combo is absurdly deadly does so much damage for free and Zorora just kind of doesn't do that and the thing that also makes Gengar kind of ridiculous is you can't hit him during the hex but Zorora is targetable at all times so he really does rely on that chaos to really get in and deal that damage so he hasn't been as impactful in my solo queue games as I've no as I noticed like uh Gengar being right so that's kind of my take on him all right our boy Cinderace Whew. Cinderace is a one-man army, and this is mostly due to Faint. Faint, for those who don't know, is an ability that actually makes uh, Cinderace invulnerable during, out during the entire time, and is 
still able to auto attack during the during the duration has an incredibly strong unite ability and can be played a lane or jungle personally i say put him in the jungle i think cinder is the best jungler in the game i know hot take you guys probably haven't tried it yet but it's been absolutely insane i've been seeing in every pretty much every game i've been playing in it's just god to your pick every game in the jungle has insane clear speed able to snowball super fast able to be level nine by the first dreadnought fight if you're able to do your camp rotations properly and it's just super 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 strong a fate just making you so safe it's super hard to actually kill a cinderace that doesn't want to die and of course thanks to their burn they're able to just melt tanks very easily which is definitely in the meta right now with things like snorlax so for that take i put cinderace s tier no discussion about it super strong character couldn't recommend it more oh our boy eldegross man i don't think i need to say anything about this only true support in the game has a heal has a speed up ultimate is damage and this uh aoe heal as well just insane character like if we had to like reorder this it's probably here maybe here you know what i'm saying like eldegross i would take eldegross in literally any composition any I, like if you just if we need anything to be filled just give me an elder cross if we don't have an elder cross and they do we probably lost that's how crazy his character is you may notice it from the streams you're watching you may notice it on my stream which you should be following if you're not already link in the description down below stream every day uh elder cross is insane just in every composition oof our boy camera he's kind of the peak definition of a b tier character he has really good damage really good laning he gets his ultimate really early which kind of just turns him into a century that gives him a shield which is adorable so that's pretty impactful if you're able to play around it but for solo queue setting he doesn't really have that carry potential that we're looking for he can carry if you're really good at him and he definitely can bully weaker lanes very easily if given the opportunity but he really does lack just that carry potential he's also very squishy so characters such as gengar lucario even Aldo or even kramer out here I can't remember. Cinderace, I'm going crazy. Uh, can just kill him super easily, right? You're going to notice pretty much any speed circuit just get on top of him super easy and just one-shot him. So they need to play very, very safe to survive. But they have a good amount of utility in their kit to actually survive that thanks to their Whirlpool. But it's just really not enough. Cramera, okay character. Would recommend to play other things, though. Pikachu. I've seen some people debate that Pikachu's S tier. I've seen some people debate that, you know, Pikachu is B tier. I personally think Pikachu is middle line. I think Pikachu is honestly like the fairest character in this game, in a game fooled with nonsense. He just doesn't really do anything crazy. He has a really good poke, thanks to Thunderball. He has a good AoE stun, thanks to Lightning. And of course, you have other options like Vault Tackle. I personally think that's a little weaker. And his Unite ability is very impactful. But as the game progresses, he doesn't scale insanely well. So the Zapdos fights becomes a little awkward due to his weak late game. But as early mid game, you are able to capitalize it quite well and fight, you know, Drenaz or Rodoms very easily, or just contest like the center of the map crabs and just kind of get your team into an advantageous point, anyways. So definitely pick up Pikachu if you want to, or maybe you already have him. Very strong character. Just doesn't do anything broken, but good enough to be played. Speaking of a character that does everything amazing, we have Alola Ninetales. I know, a lot of S tiers in this game, huh? The United knows the trend in this game. Characters, there are some characters that are insane. They just kind of have everything. So, with Aurora Veil, with the Dazzling Gleam, with her Unite ability, with her passive, she is able to CC people for free. Does everything super, 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 super well. She has a ton of damage, ton of utility, and she gives her shield. <laughs> Aurora Veil has so much text, it's crazy. Reduces the damage of people in Aurora Veil, gives herself attack speed, able to proc her passive essentially indefinitely, if, especially if you have some attack speed items on her, just makes it incredibly strong. And Unite ability does so much damage, it's crazy. This character, again, another character, if you need some DPS, put her in any composition, you're going to be just fine. Wigglytuff. <sighs> I'm so biased. I love this character. I think she's so cool. I see people put her seats here. I see this a lot. And you know what? Maybe you're right. But she does have a couple things going for her. Her early game is very strong. Pound does a lot of damage. And I think if you do take rollout instead of sing, you're going to be doing a lot. I think if you're just taking sing on her, you're kind of playing a weaker version of a Snorlax that just took Yawn anyways. 
but you can kind of play her as this very annoying frontline that disrupts a ton with rollout with uh, her own dazzling gleam that deals a lot of damage and her ultimate actually counters a lot of ultimates that we see in the game already or just characters in general such as Ninetales so I think that kind of puts her up a little bit especially characters in this series really don't feel like they have any use so I know probably hot take but I'm putting her B tier I think she is a B tier character I don't think she's terrible I think she has definitely some fringe uses and even in a solo queue environment her ultimate is so impactful and her early game laning is so strong that it's kind of hard to put her anything lower than a B tier. I know. A little weird take. Slow bro. No conversation about it. As we mentioned earlier, tanks and crowd control in this game are absolutely busted. They deal a ton of damage for free. And Slow bro is kind of just this running joke of having a Nami ult or three Nami ultimates and two Mouse Heart ultimates. And you tell me that's a character in a game. <laughs> and that sounds illegal. And it really is. Because he's able to just pretty much pick out any target. If your team's in a bad spot, he's able to just use surf to get him out of it for free he's able to pick people off with his um with his unite ability or his sidekick which is essentially another another unite ability for free he's so insane so so insane so pretty much you're noticing every composition high pretty much has like a snorlax and a slow bro because of that strong and if you can't fit both in your team just make sure to pick one or the other and you'll do just fine this character can carry a game by himself just by how much damage he does in the early game how strong surf is as a disruption tool and just how strong his pick potential is in general. Insane character, couldn't recommend him enough. And for our last boy on this list, we have Machamp. I think he's A tier. Very, very, very strong character. With Somersaults being able to drop people over him and create a disruption, and kind of just being one of like the only like true bruises in the game, dealing a good amount of damage, and scaling pretty well into late game. His Unite ability does give him a lot. He's definitely a character I think is kind of being slept on a little bit, very similar to Greninja. And he just does a lot. I would not put him in the lane. This is definitely a character I would put in the jungle already. His laning is abysmal, especially since one of your basic abilities is bulk up, which doesn't do anything in lane, but helps out tremendously with your jungle clear. So I think you could definitely put him in the jungle and do okay, but you'll probably have a weaker version of a Cinderace, of a Gengar, of a Zorora. So he's definitely like, uh, we need a little bit of damage and we need a little bit of utility. Let's pick him a champ. That's kind of more of the composition I'll put him in. But if you just kind of tag him in along in a team, you're not really going to be too upset having him anyways. If you see Machamp in your team, it's probably going to do pretty decent. Just hope they take Summer Self. Because they don't, you're going to be really, really sad. Because <laughs> that ability is insane. Makes him unstoppable. Let it gets, lets him get turn-ins for free because he's unstoppable during it. And he's able to just do really good ganks due to it and just catch people out. Not as good as a slow bro, but just does it good enough. So yeah, that's going to be it for this tier list, guys. Um, we might have to do one pretty soon again, as maybe in a couple of weeks, once Gardevoir comes out and we see the patch go down and the meta solidify a little more. But right now, the meta has solidified pretty decently. Okay, so with that being said, I want to kind of switch this narrative. You know, it's funny. I said I was going to move this around for competitive play, but uh, this is actually the same tier list I would have for competitive play regardless. I would probably just end up moving the speedsters all the way down to C tier. As speedsters in what I've noticed in a 5v5 uh, fully stacked team's competitive environment, they don't really do a whole lot. They're actually kind of weak in that regard because players are going to be very aware of characters' power spikes. I think the only speedster that would have any leeway getting away with this is Gengar. And every other speedster would just kind of move down like this. Honestly, they would actually all just straight up drop to C tier. Uh, there's no reason to pick them. If you've been watching streams such as my own, which you should if you haven't already, we could discuss this more over there. I'll be online pretty much as this video goes up. So hey, check me out. I stream every day around 1 p.m. EST. Um, you're going to notice in a lot of lobbies, especially the ones I've been playing in around Ultra Master Tier, you're going to be seeing compositions pretty much consist of this. Snorlax, Slowbro, Cinderace Jungle, Eldegrass, and kind of just one other character. We're missing a lot of Lucario for like kill lanes. We've been seeing a lot of Ninetales for disruption utility. Uh, we've seen some compositions run Greninja just for that damage as well. But you really don't see anything else outside of that. Maybe like a Machamp instead. But there's just really not a whole lot going outside. Like pretty much every composition is running those four things. So it leaves you with no flexibility. And you might be asking yourself, why? Is the game's balance terrible? Is there an issue? Well, it's not that the game's balance is terrible. It's that these characters kind of just do everything better. 
<laughs> they straight up do everything better than any other character below them. Snorlax with a free knockup on such a short cooldown, being absurdly tanky, his laning is amazing. And all the reasons I mentioned earlier, it's just insane in competitive play as well. Insane disruption, not having him on your team is... It should be a crime. Slowbro, very similar reason. Cinderace does the most damage of any character in the game, and since everyone's running Snorlax and Slowbro, Cinderace suddenly becomes amazing too, and they just can't die due to faint. So it becomes incredibly powerful, and since they get the jungle, they're able to hyperscale even more because the jungle gets so much experience in comparison to just laning. And then if we look at things like Lucario, why would you run him? Well, he's for that early game pressure, and he could definitely is like that plus one we mentioned earlier. You could throw him into a lane, and he's going to do very, very well. But he does fall off during that Zapdos fight, or and so it kind of hurts if you're behind at that point, and you're really relying on winning that Zapdos fight to... Uh, win the game you really need to stay ahead with lucario pretty much throughout the entire game and sometimes you will notice that even if you have that lucario which is what happened to me last night is that you're still just kind of gonna lose um due to the fact that your team the opponent team is just has kind of better characters which snorlax just kind of sitting there and disrupting your entire team and you can't do anything so it really hurts and of course, Elder Gross is in every team composition as they're the only true healer in the game. Not really much I'll say about it. They're insane. You can't kill them. So it's kind of the meta solidified to that at the moment. I'm sure we'll see some more mix-ups. And I'm really hoping with the patch tomorrow uh, that's coming out with Gardevoir that we do really see some heavy, heavy mix-ups in the game. Because aside from this, there's some other things that are being abused right now. Stuff like Buddy Barrier is insane and pretty much turning this game into a Pokemon MOBA to Pokemon MOBA with Lucio ultimates from Overwatch, which I personally, I don't like that. I'm not a big fan of Buddy Barrier being an item in general. I think it's very boring in design. It just makes everyone super tanky for no reason. So hopefully there's a lot of changes to the items. And yeah, I'm not going to talk about that as well. If you guys are interested in seeing me talk about uh, items and the item tier list, I can definitely make that for you guys. Have it up in the next couple days. Leave a comment down below and you want to see next for me. I plan, I've been playing a ton of Pokemon Unite. I'm super addicted. I'm about to make my second account uh, just to do a pure solo queue climb on. So if you want to see that journey, hey, follow my Twitch. I mentioned it a few times. And you can sub to the channel if you haven't already. Would really help me out. I would really appreciate it. Shows that you guys enjoy this type of content. And you know, leave a like if you haven't already. Uh, yeah, and that's going to be all for me today, guys. Love y'all. See you guys later, and yeah, have a nice day.